usually a topic that isn't going to have half of the Penn State fan base triggered whatsoever. What the hell's going on with Penn State recruiting? That's what we're talking about today, in more or less terms. Um, you know, three misses, as you can see through uh, the conversation we've had on this show, and then through the graphic, if you chose to click on this, welcome. BWI Live, I'm Thomas Frank Carr, Ryan Slater, and Sean Fitz here with me, the recruiting experts that have the information you want to know. Um, some misses. It's not a it's not an up week for the Nittany Lions in recruiting, but that doesn't mean the story is over. These guys are going to break down all the different nuances and facets of all of that, plus what's to come. And there's a lot still left in the class of 2023, but certainly the chat's on fire early. So if you got some thoughts, you got some feelings, you can drop them in there. We'll respond to um, the different conversation topics throughout the show. But uh, gentlemen, welcome to the show. Fitz is here. Um, it's an upset this morning with all the things he's got going on in his life. So appreciate you being here, Fitz. Um, can you kick us off with kind of your overview of where Penn State is in the class of 2025? Yeah, I think we're in that cycle right now where you're just trying to get to official visits. Um, you look at the losses that Penn State has had over the last couple of weeks. Matt Zoller is probably being the chief one. Uh, Trent Wilson went to Oklahoma yesterday. And and uh, Romero Ison probably an underrated one, a guy that I thought probably could end up in this class and all of a sudden turns on a dime uh, to uh, to USC. So I think that that's, you know, there, there have definitely been some losses this week, or excuse me, this, uh, this month. And uh, it's... I, I don't really see it uh, abs- resolving itself uh, right away. Um, I think it's a situation where you got to look at how Penn State does things and look at the the past data that you have going with it, although it's a bit skewed now by NIL. Um, and you got to get to June if you're Penn State. And that's uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's going to feel like a long time. But as Ryan said last week, part of the cycle. I mean, this is a mm-hmm. situation where you've got 25 guys that commit over a 365-plus day um uh, cycle and uh, you're going to have downtimes and this is one of those downtimes and, and it's not overly worrisome because we've seen it before but at the same time it's like uh, there's a couple guys off the board that you would uh, would have penciled in this class a couple of weeks ago uh, we got Stephen Cheng uh, I had his name damn it I double clutched on it Stephen Chingaris in the chat he says spring ball is here in Happy Valley yeah so Ryan we've got a, a list of players coming up that are going to be visiting Happy Valley this coming weekend. Um, just before we get to that at the end of the show, can you give us a preview? Good, bad, and different. What do you think about the list of players so far that you have up at bluewhitehillstreet.com? <laughs> yeah, well, actually, maybe I should grab my microphone before we start. Um, good. I, I w- it's, it's fine. I, I would say if you, if you compare it to some previous years, I don't know if it's as deep uh, as we've seen as far as just you know, those marquee names that Penn State fans know, like there's not a Michael Carroll, there's not an Olish, there's not a, you know, some of the other regional guys that we talk about all the time. With that said, you know, Penn State got a lot of those guys on campus over the last, what, four weeks or so. And I think I haven't gone back and personally looked compared, you know, what they brought in for spring ball this year compared to what they brought in for spring practice last year, the year before, whatever it may be. But remember that first week, Man, they had like what five top 100 guys in that first week. Second week was was solid, a lot more 2026 20, quality guys for that second week. The Easter week was great, unfortunately, because that was the week that you know Sean and I both had things going on, so which was unfortunate a little bit. But and then last week was kind of what you expect usually the week out for the blue white game, probably the, the, the most down, I guess, of, of the weeks. But um, you know, I think that it's been a good four weeks for them as far as getting the guys they need to get on campus, locking in official visits, all those good things. Right now, when I look at the blue-white or blue white, let's try it, the blue white game list, I'd say it's down a little bit compared to what we've seen in other years. But, you know, I also you know what we got, uh, what, 48 hours. Uh, certainly probably expect a couple additions to it. Let's see where things go. Yeah, we'll get to that, like I said, at the end of the show. If you've got comments or if you've got training that you got to go to, uh, skip it. Yeah, just hang out with us. Let's uh, Let's have a good time. And uh, one of the things that I love to do here early in the show is tell you about the people that make this show possible, and that is my perfect franchise, a longtime supporter here of the BWI Live recruiting show. Uh, Andy is just like you. He's a recruiting fanatic. Now, he's a Texas fan, so things are a little bit different for him, but... He, uh, he knows how you think and how you feel when it comes to recruiting. He feels the losses the same way you do. And he, uh, like you, is also looking for the next thing in his life. And he's found it with My Perfect Franchise. He left corporate America and started uh, taking control of his own life. 
And he wants to help you do that too with My Perfect Franchise. He's a franchise consultant with extensive experience placing people in the perfect franchise to manage. Not a franchise, not getting you in the door and kicking you out, like learning who you are, what you're good at, what you know, and then applying those to a franchise that he thinks has First off, a success rate that he would recommend and you fit really well in. He actually spends a lot of time talking people out of investing large sums of their uh, their life savings into a business if he doesn't think it's the right thing to do. Um, he's worked with Blue White Illustrated message board members before. He uh, placed somebody in a painting business uh, in the Nashville area. If you're somebody who wants to do this and you have experience in business or in a certain sector, check him out. My Perfect Franchise, 404-973-9901 for our podcast listeners that aren't looking at Andy's face and his contact information on the screen right now, Andy at MyPerfectFranchise.net or 404-973-9901. Thanks again to Andy for being a sponsor here on the show. Let's get to it. You guys talked about this in an article over at BlueWhiteIllustrated.com. What's going on with the Penn State class of 2025? If fans want to read that, link is in the description of the video, along with the list for this upcoming weekend that Ryan has put together, so you can check out the full thing. But guys, class of 2025, Fitz, what's going on? Yeah, I mean, we, we've kind of been leading up to this the last couple of weeks, um, thinking back to the USC rant that I went on, I think, two weeks ago now, that somebody is going to go. And honestly, did not see it being Romero Eisen. <laughs> you know, there were a couple of guys... <laughs> That you thought it might have been, but Ison was actually, I think, just on campus at Penn State at that point. Um, really good receiver from Baltimore, um, slot guy. Um, so, I mean, you you can replace him in the class, obviously, but uh, that's a guy that they've they've targeted for a while. I think he's really good, actually. Um, but uh, yeah, this is this is what you're going to see, and and you're going to have more of this. Um, there are going to be guys that you know Penn State can do a lot of things right, um, and it just uh, it it won't add up at the end of the day. I think that's a, a situation where you know you've got Matt Zellers going to to Missouri. Okay, this is condescending as hell. You lose him to Georgia, okay. You lose him to Missouri, you're starting to think that's different. You know, that's that's not something they're used to seeing. I can't remember the last kid with a Penn State offer from Pennsylvania that went to Missouri, Jaleel Clark, maybe. I mean, that's a long time ago. Um, that was uh, it, it was it was it was surprising from that aspect of of course you make your best decision for you uh, happy Matt is is happy with Missouri, but it's just it's one of those things where I think you're going to see some different sort of twist this cycle there's always twists that's what recruiting yeah. is all about really um but you're going to see some different ones that you know really turn on a dime trent wilson we've talked about one one visit to oklahoma outweighs half a dozen plus to penn state yeah and How ohio state and florida state and 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 multiple visits to all those places it's just it, it's crazy how that that stuff kind of comes together and i know ryan and i have talked about this in, in a couple of days and, I, and there's multiple multiple reasons that anybody can pick anywhere else Penn State's not is not for everybody, and Penn State is not like in a position like Ohio State where they can sort of get who they want to get. You've got to establish those relationships, develop those relationships, keep the, up with those relationships, and Penn State does that really well. But it seems more and more in this cycle, like that stuff is kind of lower on the list. Yeah, Ryan, that's kind of the. I think that should be the five alarm fire if you're seeing one. Not that you lose necessarily one player to one place, but. Does the recruiting method that Penn State deploys with relationships, continually talking to kids and being, you know, on that level with them, does it matter? And is this something that can detrimentally affect yeah. the program, not just this year, but in a in the long term for as long as NIL is in its current state, which it is right now? Yeah, it matters. And let's clarify, I mean, even if they go to collective bargaining down the road, NIL is still going to be around. You know, that still could be the difference maker in a lot of these things. I don't know the NIL is completely ever going away, but no, uh, no it sure. still matters. Yeah. 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 Right. It won't. Um, but, but I think it'll be more good. as it was, you know, intended, intended, intended is, is the word I was going to use, but like in a perfect world, that's what it means. But mm -hmm. it's the insight. players can actually go out and get their money. It, you yeah. you yeah. don't have it funneled to you. You have it funneled to you through the schools, but then yeah. on the side, you do your thing. So. Um, but anyway, I mean, I, I think now nah, I lost my track of where we go with that. I, I think, but yes, it, the way Penn State does it still works. I mean, it's not like they're having, it's not like they're down in the twenties guys and, you know, Nebraska or Michigan state or some of these other schools are surpassing them because they're just throwing money around. Like it's, they're still in a good area. I think like Penn, 
you're going to see this, and I, I think you'll continue to see this. Like Penn State will probably dip a little bit in team rankings, but that's because there are some Southern schools who are going four and eight, but they're throwing so much money around that they're going to yeah. bump into the top 12, the top eight, and that's going to bump Penn State and the Michigans down a little bit. And I, I think fans got to kind of get used to seeing that um, because, you know, everybody always wants to have a top 10 class, right? Well, that's going to be a lot harder for pretty much all these Northern schools to do outside of maybe Notre Dame and Ohio State. Would you kind of agree with that? I mean, if you're throwing in Oregon and, and some of those now, and you're lumping in, you're lumping in Michigan with teams that will struggle with this because despite winning a national championship, they don't have a great NIL program either from what I've understood. Is that fair? Like, it's not just Penn State in the realm of places that Penn State fans have a sore spot about with Michigan and Ohio State. Like, they're in the same boat as some of their contemporaries and not the only one left behind. Is that, is that fair? Yeah, I think that's fair. And I think that uh, Michigan and Penn State, very comparable in several ways. I, and the interesting thing to me is it's like it's not the ones that you think. It's like Georgia and Penn State are more similar than Penn State and Missouri, as we just talked mm -hmm. about Missouri. Like there's there's differences here. And it's, it's very interesting because Ryan and I are both in agreement that collective bargaining is going to come next two years or so, something like that. And so. it will give you a baseline to work with. And then some, you know, schools will still splash money. There's an incredible amount of donor fatigue right now because, as Nate would say, it's stupid. Like asking asking the donors to fund payroll, basically, is yeah. kind of exactly what the NCA was trying to do be, by avoiding everything. And it's and it's working from their point, but it's not working from a from a sustainability point. So I think you've got that. And the interesting thing to me, and I talked about this on our message board, Blue Illustrated yesterday, is like the ideal plan is for programs that have the means to splash money in the next two years to give themselves the momentum heading into that collective bargaining um, era, if you will. Mm -hmm. And then that's going to set them up going into that, uh, that those sort of years. And, and I think it's not going to happen a ton of places, but you know, we've seen Texas A&M try it. We saw Michigan state try it. And both of those have sort of fallen flat. Miami's going to try it and has tried it a bit. We saw the, Nevin, uh, we, we about <laughs> lost Ryan this week with the, well, all the movie. smoke. <laughs> All the smoke. Oh, it was hilarious. It was absolutely. Look it up. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it, it's one of those things where you you're gonna have to bridge this gap somehow. And uh, the Missouri's of the world and Auburn is doing some things. And it's just like there's a lot of schools that you don't view as top top tier schools or programs or whatever you want to call them. Um, and they're doing what they have to do to get it done. And again, that's not for everybody. It ain't my money. So um, I, I'm, I'm very, very comfortable, much more comfortable saying this than the people that write in the checks. But that's how you have to set your stuff up for the next couple of years. So uh, this is kind of, it just reminds me of the arms race before you could pay players where it was facilities and Penn State it was behind in facilities. And it, it's too bad we don't have Nate here for this conversation. He can pontificate about each of these layers. But now, uh, in the NIL era, these teams that can then put another ring on the ladder to get ahead again before you get to maybe a level playing field. Um, there will never be a matter? level playing field in college football. Let's clarify no, that. Right cer that. Certainly, but like the, the advances seem to be getting wider. It seems that like these particular situations are uh, creating either a further gulf. Or, am, I am think I the wrong pool here? is getting wider. Like okay. it, the, it, it used to be like this is where it hurts. We talk all the time like NIL is going to even out the talent. Well, it is in some degree, and it's hurting a lot of those top top programs now again mm -hmm. you're still going to see the elite of the lead at the top but you can make a case that it's kind of hurting those uh second tier programs in a good bit because you know maybe those c programs are kind of moving up a little bit because they're throwing the cash around now I, look i can find examples of both each way right. but if you look back five years ago before all of this like does matt zola's really go to missouri over penn state or you know there's a lot of different examples like romero east like does that does that really happen uh, five, six years ago? I don't think so. And for, for the record, I, I don't – I wouldn't be shocked at all if if, uh, if Romero does not sign with USC. Or if he does, he's in the portal quickly because that just – that doesn't make a lot of sense to me at all. But anyway. Sometimes when when you see programs like that go so far for guys, it, it makes you wonder what's up. Like it's mm – -hmm. it, it's like when we saw – oh, I don't have an example off the top of my head, but Alabama has come up north for like – dudes like uh no georgia when fran brown was there now you kind of connect the dots with fran brown and the northern guys but 
there's no reason they should have taken the receiver that's now at Syracuse that has escaped my name because it's you know he camped at Penn State, ran a great forty. I know original the oh I was thinking about him the other day. Right, the he was originally committed to Rutgers. Yeah, I for, yeah. anyway. Yeah. Anyway, know, moving we'll on. Move on. <laughs> move, well, collective <laughs> brain fart. I don't think we've ever done that. I don't think we've had three people forget one name all at the same time. Uh, but here here's the thing. Um. It's not just the bad news. And, you know, as much as we started with the rain cloud, because literally it's State College, why wouldn't we start with the rain cloud? Um, there is, there, there's Z players Hayes, left on job. the board. That's it. That Chat. Was it. Who, Comes up clutch. Th- yes, thank you. Lambda with Yazid Haynes pulling a deep pull on that one. Um, what's, the, what's the positive silver lining of the players that are left and and like True. that it's that it's you know a couple days before the blue white game so so what we just spent 16 minutes talking so negative and penn State's gonna get a four-star running back today i just kind of added that up that was <laughs> yeah, good yeah, start right. to the show guys <laughs> well that's that's what we call a turn it's a dramatic turn and we're here we go so so i'm over um, here thinking about emory simmons so it's it's fine are there, <laughs> there you are, go. are there still players on the board you know aside from henderson we can get to in just a second but you know long-term view of this class can they still get to an area as ryan Ryan, you always point out like what's the average star rating what's the quality of the kid in the class um can they still get to where they normally are even if the composition doesn't look the way for would be ideal for them to get to a dozen four-star players or so i think they're going to have to pull out a couple guys from down south that we're not really have circled would you agree with that sean i mean they're so say they get henderson today they'll be at four I think I think there's enough in the region for them to add six more and get to ten, and and they can get to twelve even because I, I I wouldn't be shocked if one or two of their guys who are committed currently can get bumped up. But like when I look when I look down the guys who I think are coming for official visits, you know I'm looking at a Ty Jackson and a, and a Zayden, what was it Wallace Walker, whatever it may be. Like, there's a lot Max Granville. Like there's a lot of really talented guys there, and if they can pop off one or two of those, it really will have a massive difference and and help them get to 12, 13, who knows how many blue chips. But like when we we look at history and we look at the region and we, the guys I know they're in great shape with, you know it's hard for me to see them getting the 12, 14, you know a bigger number of, of quality blue chip guys right now. Um that compared with the fact that like at this time last year, they had Quinton Martin in the class. Um, some, some guys maybe that are underrated, but also some guys that I think we have a fair view of as these are good quality prospects, but maybe aren't the guys that have the high four-star pedigree and are closer to where they should be rated. So just generally the, the pros the, the, the makeup of this class kind of feels different than the last couple of years where they were able to stack some, I think, impressive classes from upside or just, uh, prestige and ranking fits is what do you see in this class? Yeah, I think, I think they can get there. Um, they're just going to have to go about the way that they've done in the past and find guys that not many schools are on. Like I'm not saying find them at camp, but like find those guys that you think are gems that you have invested the time. Like you're talking about a Ty Jackson, like a kid who is already blown up. Like, it, but Penn State was on him first. Penn State was able to get him here for January, and they they established that relationship. Now, at the end of the day, is that relationship going to get him across the line? I don't know. But you've got several guys like that. In that this his staff is really good at recruiting, really good at relationships, really good at that stuff. But the end of the day like how much of that balance and then the other thing that i keep saying is what's the end of the cycle going to look like what is going to happen when you know all these you know and and we're going to see the evolution of nil over a couple of months here um you're going to see promises made are the promises kept like are can you go on the handshake can you go on the things that you you hope and Number one, that's going to lead to guys at the end of the freshman year, more guys at the end of the freshman year jumping in the portal. Number two, it's going to be like, hey, at this point, and we say every time you get closer to signing day, that map gets bigger. Like you get further away from home. If you're committed, if you're in Baltimore and committed to USC, that trip seems longer now as you approach signing day, longer than the three hours it takes to get to Penn State. So I think that that's the thing you look at. And then then you look at different guys that you – are scouting that are already committed to certain spots. And, you know, I, th- I think last year was kind of an outlier in the sense of the activity late in the cycle just kind of went away. And I think Penn state will get back to that this cycle, ha- hosting guys for official visits, for whiteouts, for, for games, what have you. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So, you know, uh, 
I always do this where I'm like, we're saving the good thing for the, the like, the, we got to get to that last. But the Alvin Henderson conversation, this is a four-star running back that is going to make a decision today. There have been a lot of positive movement in that particular area for the Nittany Lions. So um, who wants to take this to start? I don't know necessarily which one of you guys has has the uh, the inside scoop on this particular one. Fitz, you, you talked to me a little bit about this earlier uh, before the show. So, so what's your view on Alvin Henderson and this particular situation with Penn State and Auburn as the top two schools? Yeah, you look back at his list, Penn State, Auburn, Miami was in it, uh, Florida State was in it. Uh, the the production's off the charts here. Um, may not be the best competition you will see on film, but he blows by them and he puts up yards, he puts up touchdowns. He's going to be one of those guys that sets state records and things like that in yardage. Uh, Penn State does not need another running back, so J1 Sider going after a third running back is, is eye-opening to me. It's something that we've kind of been tracking the last couple of months with – Henderson and Bo Jackson and some of these other guys in there. So um, he is a guy that, uh, you know, Penn State really, really wanted to get on campus. He was set to announce last week, or I wouldn't call it set to announce, but he said he was going to announce on the 5th. Penn State kind of talked him out of it. And uh, that's that says a lot about his relationship with Cider. And I think Penn State's able to get it across the line this afternoon. Uh, Auburn was the longtime front runner here. Um, but this is this looks like a situation where he made it to campus. Penn State uh, really impressed him with what he's doing. And you've got potentially a wide open depth chart in 2025. I know there was a question in the chat a little bit earlier um, when you look at uh, what's out there, but yeah, I'm, I'm not counting on Katron Allen and Nick Singleton to be here in 2025. If they are, I, I mean, pleasant surprise or one of them, two of them, whatever it, it may be. Um, but uh, you've got an open book. I mean, you've got Quentin Martin, or actually we start before that. You've got Cam Wallace and, and London Montgomery in the class of 2023, Quentin Martin and Corey Smith last year, and now three running backs um, in the class of 2025. I mean, you're looking at a situation where it, the cream's going to rise to the top and there's going to be uh, portal casualties because of it, but uh, that's just kind of uh, how, how we do things here. So um, you look at uh, you look at the situation Penn State's in, and it makes sense to take a third one from that aspect. I don't know yeah. if it's uh, if it's one that people are going to look at and say, hey, this is this is what Penn State needed, but you know, this is a guy that wants to come from from down south. It's amazingly productive. Yeah, I'm just it, it's a surprise. It's not a surprise because you guys have been talking about it and you've been giving fans here on the Blue White Illustrated YouTube channel a heads up about this and the insider intel over at bluewhiteillustrated.com. Good time to remind you uh, if you want to sign up for that because you're here with us and you're having a good time talking about Penn State recruiting, use the promo code PSU1 for two months and you get a you get that for just a dollar. The normal promo is a dollar for a month. But we appreciate you being here, subscribing to the Blue White Illustrated YouTube channel, for liking the video, for being very enthusiastic in the chat, and of course on the on the replies. So we want to give you something in return, an extra month to try out the insider information from these guys. Uh, a little more unfiltered, a little more detail over at bluewhiteillustrated.com. I'm pretty unfiltered on here. I don't know about that. <laughs> um, at least yeah, lately. Start coming with a parental label. Um, just It's been a long time. I can imagine i don't remember the last time there was a three running back class but uh ryan you had once. mentioned once when was that 2014 james franklin's first class yep interesting so jonathan you know, uh, was it jonathan thomas nick jonathan scott thomas, mark, allen. mark allen yeah yeah mark allen was the it was committed to actually mark and uh and nick were committed to uh bill o'brien i think johnny was late john was trying, october so he was october. just before that transition yeah gotcha yeah. So very uncommon. Uh, what are your thoughts on three running backs just as a, as a strategy, as a decision? Sean laid it out. It's the cream rises the crop and, and, and you have transfer casualties. It is, it yeah. is what it is. Um, but I mean, there, there's a reason for this and a couple other things with this commitment too, before I move on, like you have to take this commitment now, but whether Look, he's already come out and said he wants to take his official visit still. I, do yeah. I think this recruitment will be completely over with? No, I do not. I expect Auburn to stay on him hard. I'm sure some other schools will. But when you have a kid come up, you know, postpone his commitment, come up and visit you, basically leave campus saying he wants to commit, well, you, you you have to take that. Because if you don't accept – if you if you have him come up and you do all these things and then all of a sudden you're like, well – Maybe we should talk about it, you know, think about it. You're done. You're out of this recruitment. Like all those things would lead to you just being out of this, I believe. So you take this commitment now, you see where things go over the next 
handful of months. You know, he's, he seems like he wants to take his visits because, Sean, I mean, the feedback we were getting was even if he committed to Auburn, he was still going to come take his Penn State official visit. So I don't know if Penn State can really spin that now and, and, you know, try not to get him to take those OVs. They'll certainly try, but it seems like he wants to take those. So let's see where things go. Go ahead, Sean. Yeah. If you, if you tell him he can't come right now, he's not coming at all. Right. That's it. <laughs> so you have to take it. And then you see where things go. I mean, I, I don't – people have been asking, like, is Barker, you know, on the chopping block because he didn't play last year or Hayes? Like, I, I don't believe that's the case at all. I think they firmly both want all three of these guys to be in this class. And then, you know, we saw one earlier. I don't know if it's the question up now. But, like, will Katron and Nick leave? Yeah, they they should leave. Unless yes. – something disastrous happens like yeah they they should be out yeah. and then aside, you know Sean you already kind of laid it out go ahead I was just say aside a major injury you know kind of a PJ Mustafer situation I <laughs> sorry Come on. sorry Fitz uh but yeah no like there I guess the point is there there are no realistic reasons why you would want to leave or stay if you're running back when in the NFL mm -hmm. you need to get your second contract you know look at Saquon Barkley you know, top pick franchise tag fifth year option He's well into his career before he finally got a chance to see free agency. So there's no reason for you to stay if you have the option to go. Mm -hmm. um, Dylan has this point in the chat. He says, player development at the wide receiver room is a major issue that has been overlooked for the past four to five years. I just want to say, like, <laughs> overlooked? I, I can't don't get through I, a show without talking about it. Yeah, I know what he I, means. Though. I know what he's saying. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no it, it's it a major issue. Better. Like Dylan, you are correct at identifying an issue. Um, is it development or is it influx of talent? I guess there, there is. You know, you can look back at the recruiting classes. You know, back to 2022, 2021. Um, I don't know. I don't want to put you guys on the spot with this particular conversation, but like, it is it is it recruiting or is it development or is it both? Yeah, it's both. I mean, there's yeah. it's always both. I mean, it, it's it's lack of continuity at that position in terms of uh, the guy that's coaching them up, and then on top of that, you're so you're looking at Marcus Higgins right now in his, uh, I, I guess we would call it his first full cycle. Um, he got here, you know, a little bit into the the 2024 cycle, mm -hmm. which you know it's still finished. He he got some guys, but like you're looking at trying to figure out if you're gonna have to overstock. And that's a, that's kind of a giveaway of like you kind of feel what you you feel out what you have in the room and there's going to be movement after the spring. Feel pretty confident about that. Um, but you you if you're continually every two or three cycles getting four and five receivers, that means you know you're not you're not doing what you need to do or you, you haven't landed the right guy. So yeah. I think it's a combination of both. Absolutely, it's something worth criticizing. It's something worth scrutinizing. It's I think it's something we've done uh, quite a bit on. Um, but, uh, it's, uh, it's something that needs to be better. And I, you can't look at it and say, it's this guy specifically, or, you know, it's Stubblefield Haggins or it, whatever amount of players, especially when you're coming off what it's been two years since they had a first round pick, uh, John yeah. two, yeah, two years. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's one of those situations where you're in that hole and it, it, you're almost digging to get up, you know, you're, you're digging to get out and it's a, it's a tough situation. I, and I don't want to belabor this point too much because a, a superstar talent that can transcend issues can change your offense and can help you out. But three running backs in, in a class and, and the emphasis on tight ends and you want to get good players no matter what, but it feels sometimes like you're leaning into some of the problems that you have when you're taking three running backs and elite tight ends are great, but how many of them can, can be, uh, Brock Bowers, right? Who, who's kind of what, a guy that what can I would say to that, though, T. Frank, though, what I would say to that is that we're not at practice every day. Mm -hmm. I don't know that running back room as well as they do. So, right. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying I, I get this is this is the tough part. It's like you want to take talented players and Nick Singleton, Catron Allen in this particular offense. A lot of this is shaded with recency bias of 2023 uh, was bad you know, for the offense, but 2022, like they were explosive. They were actually what we expected them to be. So mm -hmm. it doesn't getting back on track and everything I'm saying is unimportant. It is not correct, but like that, that just having that miss of receiver and not being able to land one of those guys to help balance the offense. And then you take three running backs. It just kind of feels like the, the boat is tipping the wrong way instead of riding the ship. But of course, as I said, 
15 minutes ago, we're we're not even halfway through this cycle. And of Co Corey in the chat says, I love the chaos in the chat. Always brightens my day. Corey, it has been entirely distracting today. If you well, can't you should tell. sign up then for, for <laughs> the Lions Den then, buddy. Let me tell you. <laughs> uh, if you love chaos and chats. Jeez. Um, um, but yeah. here, here, last thing I would say is like, I think this transfer portal is going to be very interesting. I think these next 15 days are going to be very interesting. What my fear, Sean, I don't know if you agree with this or not, but like if you're a Penn State fan, like can Penn State really recruit top receiver talent out of a portal when that receiver talent, it's not quarterback level NIO money, but like I feel like if you're an elite receiver, so you're getting money splashed at you. And it goes yeah, against the way the Penn State likes to do things. You're right. Yeah, it's going to depend on the market in, to, in terms of who else is looking. And the problem is for like playmaking receivers, everybody's looking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, best way to find them, as we've talked about here on the show, ad nauseum, is to find them in high school recruiting. And the blue-white game coming up this weekend, of course – um, some shameless promotion tomorrow at 2 p.m. We're going to be broadcasting live from Nittany Cards Plus in State College. So join us for that particular show uh, in person. Fitz and myself and Nate Bauer are going to be talking about the Blue White game. And then we got our tailgate show 45 minutes before kickoff. We're going to do, uh, it's a, excuse me, an hour before kickoff. We're going for 45 minutes. We're going to take you into the Blue White game talking about all the things that have happened so far in the spring. Check it out here on the YouTube channel. Um, but the game and the recruiting element of that. Uh, we we talked about at the beginning of the show, Ryan. Um, I guess give us an mm -hmm. overview again and dig into wherever you want as far as who you find interesting and what you find interesting about this particular group. I would say so. Right now, our list is at just under sixty players total. You know, of the scholarship guys, so uncommitted scholarship guys are around just under half a dozen. I think twenty two, twenty three, and then you have a ton of committed players, right? Because they're they'll introduce their whole twenty twenty four class. So the guys who haven't enrolled should pretty much all be there. Uh, a good chunk of the 2025 class will be there. Masai Mickens just to beat up, he'll be there. So, uh, you know, out of those 60 or so players, really about 40 or so are, you know, either have an offer or have committed. So it's it's a good list as far as that kind of goes. The what the one thing I stress again though is like the the uncommitted scholarship 2025, right? Those are always there's a reason we kind of separate them in the list if if you subscribe and look at kind of how we lay things out. And you know, a lot of those guys right now don't have official visits set to Penn State. So when you get to mid-April, you don't have an official visit set to Penn State. It kind of kind of helps paint the picture of where you're at on the board. And, hey, many of these guys may get official set. Uh, let's see where things go here. We didn't expect Trent Wilson and Merrill East. Like, there's going to be guys who commit, and these guys move up kind of. But uh, you're missing, like I said, the Brandon Finneys of the world, the Jeff Agsoners of the world, the Michael Carrolls, you know, those kind of guys, the, the players that we've been really talking about, Lex Cyrus. Um that we don't have those we're not seeing those guys on the list at least now uh currently and that's kind of where i think if a lot of fans look at it they they would they would say it's a down list compared to last year where what well, was it kevin haywood was in town there was uh we were talking about william satteroid at the time there, there was a yeah. there was a handful of guys that um you know we we were talking about a lot yeah and there's been a lot of commits recent over the recent years coming out of the blue white game even if it is a couple days after or maybe even a week afterwards fits um what's your temperature gauge on if fans should have their antennas up for a commitment not alvin henderson today specifically but tied to the blue white game somebody maybe who comes sees everything enjoys it and decides they want to join the class um not particularly holding out for one um i think uh, you know you get uh, if you get alvin henderson today lump it in that group i guess but uh no i don't I don't look at this list and and see guys that jump out to me as pot uh, potential um, commit on the spot type guys. There are guys that are on this list that I could see ending up in this class, but uh, you know I don't think the pressure is there yet. Um, you know, look at maybe some some positions, linebackers there, um, offensive line if they decide to. You know, you usually take a guy there um, o over this weekend. It seems like a tradition, but uh, no, you're just looking at it and. And you're thinking there's some guys that you can build on. So I'm not not looking at uh, big commitments. And now that, of course, I said that, we can clip this next week when uh, when a guy commits. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about some of the individual players. Uh, Ryan, you rattled off some names, but uh, um, we got some guys here on the list. I want to start with Floyd Bucard uh, coming up this weekend. Uh, what do you know about him? What do you know about this particular situation? Yeah, fast-moving recruitment, right? Uh, blows up at the Under Armour 
Miami, which I think it was Miami, Sean, which is what was that? Maybe mid February, late January. It was I in February. Early, yeah. February, yeah. Because I know Penn State. Well, Penn State was one of the first schools to offer, kind of right after that. He's from Canada originally, playing at Miami Central now. Which he just transferred to Miami Central, right? Wasn't he at a different school? I believe so. Previously, yes. I think it was like Mobile Christian or something. It was, I think, I think in Alabama or something like that. But yeah, anyway, about you need Haynes a little bit ago. I'm, I'm not on that one right now. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, six, two and a half, 300, like a lot of good uh, movement skills for size, all those kind of things. Uh, yeah. I believe this is his first visit though. So we'll get a much better feel for where he's actually at physically and, you know, how he meshes with Penn State, what he likes about Penn State, all those kind of things. But uh, certainly a guy who has in the last two months, really kind of take seen his recruitment take off with Oklahoma and Florida State and Oregon and some other schools uh, kind of offering after that camp. And it, the thing people know is like those Under Armour camps and the UC report camps, like schools pay for all the information. So if these guys go to those camps and they bust off some really great times and things like that. That's how you see, uh, you know, fast, fast moving uh, offers and things like that after these camps. It, really good with his hands too. You know, watching some of the things he's able to do here on on film. Fitz, is there somebody else on the list, or do you have anything on Floyd you want to you want to give? Well, we can stay at Miami Central uh, since that seems to be the the bulk of uh, the names coming up this weekend uh, with offers. But uh, Who'd have thought? you look at uh, Randy Adrika. <laughs> that was good. Uh, I, I yeah no and uh defensive lineman he's got an official visit set up which ryan sniffed out this week um you know it's it, it's becoming more and more likely on the defensive line i said this about defensive end to begin with but on the defensive line as a whole you're gonna have to go outside the region um so it's going to be a situation where you'd like to get him up and sort of set him up for june and see if you can make that work um where are we at here uh ej marcel marcelin ryan do, am i saying that right I think that's okay. Great. Sounds good uh, to me, buddy. Another linebacker from Miami Central. So I think there'll be a couple linebackers in, in town this weekend that, uh, you know, are on that offer board. Um, but yeah, I'll agree with Ryan. I, you know, you look at past lists and this, uh, this, one, this one's a bit different. No, no glossing over that one or sugarcoating that one. I think it's uh, a situation where you've got different uh, spring games and different weekends. I know Ohio State's got theirs this weekend um, and it's, uh, you know, probably taking a, taking a bit of a hit. There's more of an, it, it's interesting looking at this list. There's almost more national yeah. or outside the region guys than, yeah. uh, you know, typical uh, pipeline guys. So that's, that's interesting to me. Yeah, Real quick. Those, go, go ahead. For it. No, no, no. I no, was going to, I'm, this is throwing salt in the wound, but like I pulled up last year's blue white list. You have Kevin Haywood, Liam Andrews. These are just the guys who were not committed at the time. Kevin Haywood, Liam Andrews, Nigel Smith, Amari Williams, Benedict Ume, Jeray Hawkins, Corey Smith, of course, goes on to commit. Jalen Harvey case goes on to commit. Um, Donovan Harbor. Like, I mean, it was uh, when I compare what we have this year. And a couple, a couple of these guys are good. Like the Miami Central guys we just talked about are pretty good. I didn't mention uh, Jaden Lofton, who has an official visit set. Uh, with Penn State. I mean, there, there are some quality guys. We won't hit on all of them here to, to keep some behind the paywall, but uh, it's just not as deep when it comes to maybe like top 200 kind of talent right. as we saw last year. Uh, 2026 seems interesting. If there are some guys whose whose names I've heard enough, there's a couple of guys that I noticed uh, on the list that uh, do kind of pique my interest. Wondering if you guys want to talk about any of those players and, and how you feel about just generally 2026 players uh, a year out what does it mean for them to be at the blue white game? It matters. It, it, I mean, it, it, it certainly matters because this, these, these recruitments are only moving faster and faster and faster. I mean, Penn state already has a 2026 commit uh, and you know, he's got two, two more years left of high school. So uh, I, well, the thing I'd say about that list uh, four on 300 players. Uh, so that's pretty good to out of, I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, some, I think eight or so, scholarship guys that they've offered who, who we have confirmed at the moment so that's solid you got jc anderson who's going to be one of the top tight ends in this class coming up uh he, he confirmed that you know weeks and weeks ago and then travis johnson too would be the other one wide receiver out of uh chesapeake down the the tidewater area uh he's coming up the one thing with with travis too is his brother he ended up at west virginia but his brother was recruited by Hagens at virginia and he kind of explained you know how it was he went to West Virginia because dad went to West Virginia, mom yeah, went to West legacy Virginia. There. Yeah. yeah, legacy guy. But like he was kind of explaining that like the relationship with Higgins was like very hard to say no. Like that that he called the guy family multiple times. So keep keep an eye on that one. Uh, we'll, we'll see where things go. Uh, Eric Eisler has this question in the chat. We only have a couple of minutes. We actually have to end early today. He says, "Good receiver group at uh, Northwestern High School in Germantown, Maryland. Um, any of these guys good enough to make it on the radar? Do you know any of the names here?" um that he's mentioning okay 
No, off the top of my head, no. Uh, I, yeah. I, <laughs> I usually look those things up when I see them. Penn State's I, offering like 400 guys a class nowadays, guys. <laughs> like I'm trying to just – like if they don't have a Penn State offer, it's – and it, I hate saying that because it used to be a lot easier for me to follow guys in the region, but that was when Penn State's offering like 180 guys. Now they're offering legitimately – I don't know if they passed 400 yet, but it was like 380 or so the last time I counted it. It's so hard to just track all the guys that they've offered that, you know, those kind of those players who they may end up being guys we're talking about in June because they come in camp. It's just hard for me to to try and balance that. And then, oh, by the way, 2026, they've already offered like 100 guys, too. So it's just the, the way they offer now has really kind of changed the way I go about my job in a lot of ways. Uh, Eric, appreciate you donating the channel. Thank you for uh, Thank you. supporting the Blue White Illustrated YouTube live show. Sorry, we don't have any information on that one. <laughs> um, that happens sometimes. Um, there's these guys are amazing, by the way. Like when there's there's a partial name with a misspelling in the chat, and and Fitz is like, oh yeah, that guy. I know, I know his high school. I know his high school coach. Blah blah blah. And then sometimes it happens. Yeah, um, Northwest is uh, where Norval Black went. There's been some guys that have come through there, um, and it's uh, you know it's a good area for talent. But I just mm -hmm. I haven't looked and I haven't ch haven't checked out those guys. I know, yeah, he mentioned they they end, ended Quince Orchard's win streak this year. Um, good team, but I I don't have any more on that. Um, okay, so getting back to the blue white game, any other names, any other uh, situations you have an eye on for uh, this particular weekend? I would just say keeping an eye on adding talent uh, because they're working hard here at the end to, to try and get some guys up that I know we don't have confirmed yet. So we'll see uh, where things go. I don't really see, like Sean already mentioned, a guy or two that's on commitment watch. Obviously, Alvin Henderson today. Uh, but, you know, I, it's, I get the impression to have a good weekend here. They're going to get into next week, uh, try and finalize any official visit things. And then I think coaches hit the road next Thursday or so. And, you know, that'll that'll be everything then, because there, there's a lot of things with the way May is operating now that is different because coaches can only see a player one time compared to two. And uh, we'll, we'll get into that on a different podcast. But I think you just kind of get through this weekend. No injuries in the game. Most importantly, mm -hmm. you know, do your best with the guys who are coming up that, that, you're, that are really important to you. And then next week, you kind of reset and see where things are at. Uh, Corey says in the chat, would love to see Andy Staples on the show during the season. Uh, if you want to see the reverse, Fitz is uh, a semi-regular on Andy Staples' show. So go check out that and uh, what they have a conversation about. Uh, when's the last time you were up there on Andy's show? It was recent, uh, like last month or so? Yeah, it was probably last month. And it got, kind of all runs together. I, like, I love chatting with Andy. He's so introspective and things like that. It's like uh, it's a different, it's an outsider version of, of Nate. Basically, it's just uh, always <laughs> thinking about the uh, the other things. So, no, it's it's good. And and also check us out tomorrow if uh, if you're in the area for the uh, the live show um, at uh, Nittany Cars Plus. We're happy to have him as a sponsor and happy to to check out the uh, the sites there. Yep, we're going to be there starting at 2 p.m. live show previewing the blue white game. But of course, you know we'll be there a little bit earlier. Well, I'll I'll be there a little bit earlier setting up. So if you want to talk with me, um, I am unbelievably distracted when doing that but i will be nice at the very least so hopefully uh we have a great turnout and you can go check out some fun stuff in happy valley before the blue white game comes up on saturday but all that stuff coming up this week subscribe to bluewhiteillustrated.com here on the youtube channel and of course like the video if you're here there's a hundred people watching at minute 43 appreciate your support if you like the video helps us out um and that's always appreciated we'll be back tomorrow we'll talk to you then